I am shutting down this podcast. The best time to invest in India was in July 1991. Where there's still opportunity in this market. Say counters which have got that you know, perfect value. We were selling somewhere around 2 to 1.5 thousand battery packs in the two-wheeler segment per month. Mm-hmm. And we saw this as an opportunity to come in and partner with larger organizations. We have reached 1,35,000 customers. I started this podcast on the 16th of Jan 2023. And it was my desire to try and create smarter investors and educate Indians about how to invest in India. When I was born in 1995, the Indian economy was barely $500 billion. Today, we're at $3.5 trillion. And I believe that by 2030, we can be a $7 trillion economy. This is creating one of the best investment opportunities for Indians in a generation. Over the last 48 episodes, we've had the opportunity to talk to fantastic guests like Mr. Neil Borate, celebrated investors like Mr. Ramesh Taman, and extremely intelligent and enterprising entrepreneurs in diverse spaces. We've also covered every single major sector of the economy, major events like the Adani Hindenburg Report, the Indian Budget, and many, many more. And along with that, we've had the opportunity to teach you guys critical portfolio building lessons. I believe that this should form a strong base of understanding for you guys to become smarter investors. But this is not the end of Pesa Smart. Believe me, we have a lot more coming for you. For those of you guys that are watching our Pesa Maker series with Mr. Deepan Mehta, that will continue. We're also launching a new series on how to invest in mutual funds, as well as a new series on interesting stories in the Indian economy. Next week, we'll be releasing our final episode. The 15th episode will be a special Q&A session with Mr. Deepan Mehta. So please do leave your questions in the comments below. But first, let's quickly recap the highlights. Because this is not the end. This is just a new beginning. Over this last year and a half, we've had the opportunity to cover some really interesting and impactful events. We started out by covering the Indian budget in Feb 2023. And it is one of the most landmark budgets because of the size of the expenditure allocation to rail, road and port. India's economic growth is estimated to be at 7%. The Indian economy is therefore on the right track. The capital investment outlay is being increased steeply by 33% to 10 lakh crores. It's so important because not only did railway and road stocks rally and have continued to rally, but also the improvements in logistics cost across the entire Indian economy will continue to drive growth in an important and meaningful way. Soon after that, we cover the Adani Hindenburg saga. The Adani group stocks continue to be under pressure. All group stocks posting major cuts in today's trade. The- this report was a deliberate and a malicious attempt aimed at damaging our reputations. For those of you that don't know, Hindenburg is a short selling firm based out of the US. And they released a report at the same time that Adani was going out of the follow-on IPO. And they alleged that the Adani stocks were overvalued. There was accounting impropriety. They alleged that the Adani group was committing financial fraud. Since that report, SEBI and the Supreme Court have conducted investigations into the Adani group and have largely given them a clean shit. And you can see how the stock prices have rebounded from that point. Fundamentally, the way the Adani group makes money is that they borrow money from international markets at cheap rates of 6 to 8%, and they deploy that capital into large infrastructure projects in India that earn 15% or so, and they earn that spread. Their key criteria to success is excellent execution. Since then, the Adani Group has received a large volume of funding from GQG partners. The Adani Empire's shares have in fact surged on Friday after an Indian-led US boutique investment firm GQG purchased about $1.87 billion worth of stake in the group. This marks the first significant investment in the Indian business empire since Hindenburg's report sparked a stock round. And as you can see, although the stock price for a lot of Adani stocks has not reached the pre-Hindenburg peak, the group has largely recovered. We also covered one of the most interesting events of 2023, which is a banking crisis in US and Europe. Last week, two US banks collapsed. It set off a chain reaction. Now another bank is on the brink. We are talking about global investment bank Credit Suisse. The global banking sector is in panic mode. Investors are worried. The sentiment has changed. People now feel that banks are a risky investment. Although we've forgotten this today, in early 2023, 
there were a series of bank failures, SAB, Silvergate, and a couple of others in the US had collapsed. And along with that, Credit Suisse, a celebrated Swiss bank, was also on the verge of collapse. These banks had collapsed because they had bought long-dated bonds, which are government bonds, when interest rates were cheap. And when interest rates were raised in 2023 to fight inflation, they found that the bonds that they had bought had lost a lot of value. And as a result, they were in a lot of financial trouble. Since then, the banking crisis was well handled by the Fed and Credit Suisse was merged into UBS. And that crisis was successfully dealt with by the global economic authorities. Most recently, we discussed the long rally that's been going on in small cap and mid cap stocks and the concerns that many investors as well as the regulators have that these stocks are being heavily overvalued. Where is it that the PEG is looking good? Where, where there's still opportunity in this market? Oh, I'm just scratching my head so far to find those stocks and uh, looking for suggestions, frankly. But right now, there's very little space in the market or very little, um, I would say, counters which have got that you know perfect value. We also discussed the measures taken by SEBI and Amphi to combat this problem by reducing the amount of money that investors can put into small and mid-cap stocks through mutual funds and withdraw from these small and mid-cap funds in order to prevent a liquidity crisis. We also gave some insight on why these small and mid-cap stocks have been overvalued and what the future looks like. So does that mean that we're in for a time correction? We are seeing a time correction if you ask me. And while the headline Nifty does not show any major correction, but across the board, small mid-cap companies uh, have seen 15-20% of correction. For those of you that are still interested in this topic and want to hear his thoughts, please check out the podcast. I think it's still relevant to understand why these stocks are trading at the levels they're trading at and what's going to be happening in the future. But it's not just enough to cover the events that are going on. It's important to have a strong base of knowledge to understand how to manage your portfolio. The first thing that you should know is what companies to buy and what companies not to buy. And one of the most important principles of that is avoiding companies that have too much debt. Because the reality is, as shareholders, if a company has too much debt, there's not going to be very much cash flow left for you, the investor, as returns. As an investor, why should we be avoiding highly indebted companies as a principle and as a concept? High debt companies have been perceived to be high risk companies. There's no two ways about it. You're taking on high debt because your basic business model is more capital intensive. And therefore, it's not such an outstanding business if you have to keep on investing capital to generate growth. So, so it's almost, I guess, what you were saying is if, if a company has, I guess, uh, 100 rupees in capital requirements, if if a lot of that is on debt, if you know 80, 80 out of that 100 rupees is financed through debt, then the returns left from those cash flows, left for the equity capital holders, is very little. That's right. To highlight that principle, we covered the story of ADAG, which is the Anil Dhirubhai Ambani Reliance Group, versus the Mukesh Dhirubhai Ambani Reliance Group, and showed how good debt management practices result in different outcomes for companies that are quite similar. We also covered the feature of Vedanta, a highly indebted company, but a company that has a lot of positive things coming in their future. And we also covered the unfortunate case of Vodafone Idea, where they just simply couldn't compete with the free service Geo provided and ultimately have ended up sinking into debt. But the thing is, knowing what companies to buy and sell is not enough. If you have to look at your investment returns, you have to look at it holistically across your whole portfolio. And in order to help our viewers, you guys, understand how to do that, we had a session where we spoke about what percentage of your portfolio you should be allocating to different sectors, large caps, mid caps, and small caps, and how to benchmark your returns. Surely by adding mid cap stocks, investors can get an edge on the index. Look, the investor is not fixated on the size of the company. His objective is to get the maximum returns. And the highest returns historically over 50, 100 years has come from mid cap and small cap stocks. Obviously, because the size is small, they can grow faster. The faster you grow, the higher returns you can generate. You've been a mid-cap investor for a very long time. How is investing in mid-caps played out for you? So I think mid-caps are really the uh, cream which creates the outperformance. We also discussed how to navigate the ups and downs of the market, ensuring you don't buy the wrong stocks at the wrong time, what to do in good times as well as what to do in bad times. And finally, we covered how to select a stock to buy including an extremely important checklist on what you should be looking at 
before you buy a stock. I've got to the point where I'm thinking about buying a stock. One thing you advocate is having a checklist. So working with a checklist works really well. I think in, every, in all dimensions of life, if an investor designs a checklist and follows it, then a lot of mistakes can be avoided. And that checklist can be very simple. Quality of the management, is it part of a Tata group, Birla group, corporate governance? Second, what are the growth prospects of the industry? What are the level of debt? Who are their auditors? You know, simple things like this. And if an answer is yes to most of them, then that stock is worth buying. But if you are compromising on any of these quality parameters, be sure that you are compromising on the quality of the stock also. But in order to understand the Indian economy and its future trajectory, it's important to get a diverse set of perspectives. We had the opportunity to speak to Mr. Neil Burate, Deputy Editor of The Mint, and Mr. Abhinay Basin, Head of Product Marketing at ProfitWheel, to understand the future of content creation in India. Neil very kindly shared his thoughts with us about how influencers have been affecting investment behavior in this country and fostering financial inclusion. And Abhinay talked about how AI is changing the future of content creation and marketing. We also covered the real estate investing market with the help of two experts in the space, Mr. Keo Shah, CFO at Birla Estates, and Mr. Rama Shia Yadav, the founder and CEO of Integro Asset Management. Both of them spoke about what real estate investing is like, what to look for in a good real estate investment, the future of real estate investment, and the returns you can expect from real estate investments pan India. For anyone interested in real estate investing, I encourage you to check these podcasts out. I'm sure they're going to be extremely important and enlightening. But in order to understand one of the great growth engines of the Indian economy, the startup ecosystem, we spoke to four successful founders in different fields. We spoke to Mr. Jaydi Banerjee, the founder of Dwara Smart Gold. Dwara Smart Gold is going to villages and helping rural women buy digital gold. Not only does this reduce the cost burden on them of traveling to nearby cities to buy gold, but it also improves the value of their savings because they don't have to pay things like making charges. We understand the fact that gold is popular. Mm -hmm. We understand the fact 90% of this country or 90% of jewelry sales is gold. We understand the fact that 90% of the industry is still unorganized. Mm -hmm. So here is an opportunity where we can take a simple product mm -hmm. and still create financial inclusion for the people mm -hmm. and get more and more people into the financial main financial markets. Wow. We can't serve the country in a better way. We also spoke to Mr. Kushal Loda, an influencer turned edtech founder, who is with his startup, Kagar trying to expand finance upskilling and help CA and CFA students enhance their skills. So Kegar is like an idea which is trying to solve a problem where people who want to get a job in finance, unemployment rate is very high in India. According to one insight, 83% talent shortage is there in the BFSI sector, which is the banking, financial services, insurance sector. 83% means that these HRs are saying that we are not able to find quality candidates 83% of the times. Like whenever we hire, 83% of the chances are that we have to upskill these employees because they are not quality hires. So that's a big problem which these, this industry is also facing. All I'm trying to solve is that I am trying to upskill these people who are let's say not getting a job and who want a job in finance. I am training them, grooming them with skill sets that are not taught in their CA, CFA, CCA, BCom curriculum and then helping them get a job, whatever they want. Yeah. So that's Kegar basically. Yeah. So we launched. We also spoke to Ms. Vidhi Merchant, an interesting founder in the health tech space who is with her startup, Mood Space, trying to make mental health and counseling more accessible to Indians. Uh, one out of five people are dealing with mental health conditions and these are really um, qualified research publications who are talking about these, these yeah, concerns. Yeah. We want to now show people what they can do once they know that they're dealing with a mental health concern. Traditional psychotherapy is a long-term solution. You need to be in therapy for a longer time period so that your therapist is able to work with you and navigate through all the life's challenges um, that you may be dealing with. Companies are now wanting to provide mental health uh, resources to their employees as an employee benefit. And we saw this as an opportunity to come in and partner with larger organizations. This way, one, we're able to get a retainer revenue uh, coming in, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we're also able to impact and get access to a larger audience. And finally, we spoke to Mr. Pratik Kamdar, the founder of Neuron Energy, one of India's only lithium-ion battery manufacturing plants. 
Uh, currently, we are selling somewhere around two to and half thousand battery packs in the two wheeler segment per month. Mm-hmm. Uh, next year, we expect to triple our revenue from where we are. So the number of packs should go up to in the two wheeler space around eight to ten thousand battery packs, which will include packs for ba- battery swapping mm-hmm. and electric two wheeler OEMs. Uh, with that, we'll be adding two plants. Uh, mm-hmm. One will be for our consumption in Delhi for the dedicated two wheeler manufacturer, and one will be in Pune. See, but ultimately, this podcast is about helping you, our viewers, grow your wealth, and that's why we spoke to a number of personal finance. and investment experts as well mr suresh sadgopan kindly shared his insights on how to improve your personal finances avoiding too much debt burdens finding the right investment options and the importance of continuous disciplined investment we also spoke to knowledgeable and successful investors like mr siddharth vora of prabodas leeladhar he shared with us his unique blend and approach to investing which is a mix of quantitative where he looks at hard data and numbers and qualitative where he looks at the fundamentals of a company before making investment decisions we also spoke to shankar nath who kindly shared his strategies on finding the right stocks as well as the right mutual funds and how he manages his money finally it was my pleasure to interview india's 10th largest investor mr ramesh damani he very kindly shared his thoughts on the future of the indian economy as well as his investment philosophy and his pearls of wisdom are extremely invaluable in understanding how to value companies how to make the right investments and how to grow your wealth through investing you know the best time to invest in india was in july 1991 the day before i think may or june before manmohan singh presented his liberalization budget which changed the course of the indian economy it completely changed the course of the economy so the best day was then the second best day was today okay you you know you can't win if you don't play the game you know you yeah. if you don't make shoot the basket you're not going to make the basket out there you have to play to win So in order to understand the stock market and profit, you have to invest in the stock market. And over time, you get better. Is this a good time to invest? Absolutely, good time to invest. Uh, would I be investing now? Absolutely, I'd be investing now. Would I tell the young people to invest today? Absolutely, I tell them. But used as a not as a five-week thing or a, even a few years thing, but used as a 15-year, 25-year, 30-year stepping board. Please do go watch the full podcast. It'll be extremely important to you to learn from an expert investor. like mr damani how to grow your wealth but the most common podcast we did which was to improve our knowledge on the indian economy was we covered 16 of the largest sectors in the country in every sector we discussed four or five of the largest most critical companies as well as their financials strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats and we broke down what part of your portfolio you should be putting into every single sector as well as what our outlook on that sector is but the key takeaway from this series more important than anything else is that the key sectors that you need to be investing in are real estate infrastructure and banking we believe real estate needs to be 10 to 15% of your portfolio infrastructure is another 15% or so and banks should be nearly 30 to 40% of your portfolio in addition to that we have positive views on pharma it hotels and the auto industry but sectors like fmcg were not so positive one to understand a detailed breakdown of every single sector please go watch the full podcast mr deepan mehta our recurring expert has some deep insights to help you understand what you should be doing with your portfolio we hope you stick around with us though because we have a lot more to bring to the table we're going to be launching a new series on what the right mutual funds to invest in are our ongoing paisa maker series with Mr Deepan Mehta will continue to run and we have a really new series that I'm really excited about on the future of the Indian economy we're going to be talking about interesting topics like how green and renewable energy is powering the economy going forward we're going to talk about how the infrastructure expansion is going to reduce logistic costs and drive economic growth we're going to be talking about the electronic supply chain and the expansion of manufacturing in the country we're going to be discussing digital public infrastructure like ondc account aggregators and many many more initiatives that are going to take india to the next level and i really hope that you stick with us as we go to the next level as well i really i want to thank you guys our viewers for joining me on this journey i came to india a year and a half ago to try and build the indian capital markets up a little bit and the response has been overwhelming because in a year we've managed to cross nearly 7000 subscribers and 
you know, several thousand hours of watch time, hundreds of thousands of views, and none of this would be possible without you guys supporting us. And I want to take a, another second to thank you. I really hope you're continuing with us on this journey. We, all of us at Pesa Smart, are going to continue to work extremely hard to bring new and better content to you. And FYI, if we ever get a good guest, don't worry, we'll do another podcast. But that's the end for season one. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. I really appreciate all the love and support that you guys have shared. And I look forward to seeing you guys going forward. Thank you. This podcast is produced by Elixir Equities Private Limited, a SEBI registered research analyst. Registration number INA 00004787. The information provided in this podcast is for educational and information purposes only and should not be considered as investment advice. Investment in securities markets are subject to market risk. We strongly advise all investors to read all related documents carefully before investing.